Hi everybody, my name is Spike Brave, and in this tutorial I'd like to teach you how to use the Select Mech feature that's available in MechWarrior Online. Now this video will be a little bit longer because we'll go through all the features, and also what we'll be doing is referencing a couple other of my videos, because this one will be long as it is, so there's a couple other components on the Select Mech screen that I feature in other tutorials, and I'll point those out when we get there, but I just wanted to give you a heads up about the length. So first of all, to get to the Select Mech feature, we're going to start out on the home tab of the Mech Lab. Now there's a couple other places you can reach this from, most mo notably the Mech Lab, but it works the exact same way in either place. And so the first time you're likely to encounter it is on the home tab. So that's where I decided to put this tutorial. But again, wherever you find it, wherever you use it, it works the exact same way. So let's go over here to our navigation where it says Select Mech. As always, we get our helpful pop-up when we mouse over that says Select a New Mech. So, let's go ahead and press that button and see what happens. Now you can see that the uh, navigation pane has changed. It's the biggest change right away, and this is uh, the navigation for the mech lab. So it kind of bops you out to the mech lab when you're selecting a battle mech. So keep that in mind. If you're curious about these navigation items, just check out my tutorials on those particular sections, and you can find the information you're looking for. So the next thing that we see is right here in the center, we have our big panel where we can select the battle mech. We have some filters on top. And then finally over here, we have our mech details component. If you want to know more information about this, check out my mech details tutorial. I'll go through everything you need to know about this here, but it's just some information about the name of your battle mech and any warnings it might have. Also over here on the right-hand side, we've got this mech stats panel window here on the bottom. If you need to know more about that, check out my tutorial on the mech stats. I go through it in detail there, but I just want to keep this one as short as I can, and there's a ton of stuff to go over. So let's talk about what's in the center here in this big area. So this is where we go to select the battle mech. Let's talk about these bu these buttons and filters on top first. So first of all, we have a show all button. So if we click that, what that does is it sets our one of our filters to all, and we'll go cover these in just a moment, but it shows every battle mech that we own. The next thing that we have is expand all, and what this will do is expand all of the panel accordions down here to show pictures of all our battle mechs. So I'm going to hit that, and it'll take just a second. I own nearly 300 battle mechs, so it's got to load all those pictures. And there we go. They're all expanded. The next thing we see is collapse all, and what that'll do is close all my uh, accordion windows. There we go. That's all there is to that one. The next thing we see is a little filter here that lets us filter by faction alignment, so we can say both. So I'll see both my Inner Sphere and Clan Battle Mechs. If I just click Inner Sphere, we'll see this change, and it will just show my Inner Sphere Battle Mechs. And what I'm going to do is change this filter to light so we have less mechs to deal with, so the filters act just a little bit faster, so not dealing with 300 mechs. The next filter that we have up here, though, is our Clan Filter. So if I click on that, we see only Clan Battle Mechs. Pretty simple, pretty straightforward. I like to use both because... I play both, so it just makes sense for me, but feel free to set this however you like. The next slider that we see is for filtering whether we own a battle mech or if it's a trial mech. Now, if you're a new play newer player, I recommend keeping on both so you can see trial mechs that you can take out if you need to use those. If you have some battle mechs and don't want to see the trial mechs anymore, hit this own button. This will only show you the battle mechs that you own. And then finally, we have Trial, and this just shows battle mechs that are available as Trial Battle Mechs. So that's all there is to this filter. I like to set this one to Own because I have a lot of mechs, and I don't want to fiddle with those Trial ones. So the next filter that we have up here is whether we want to sort mechs by their weight class or their chassis. So as you can see here, I have it sorted by chassis, so we see the battle mechs alphabetical in their chassis. So what we'll do is we'll hit All again, so we see all our battle mechs. And then we'll say by class, because we can see we have our adder and our archer. Well, our adder is a light mech and our archer is a heavy mech. But our cheetah is a light mech and our atlas is an, is an assault. So if I go ahead and hit class, what we'll see is it changes the accordions to just have the classes. We can open that up and then we'll see here's all my adders. And the UI changes just slightly here to where it's got the... Uh, one panel window with all the pictures in it. And we'll talk more about how we interact with that in a moment. So we'll go back to chassis. I prefer that view, but feel free to use whichever you like. And then finally, there's this button. And let, that lets us invert, invert the sorting options. So in the case of chassis, it's alphabetical. 
And if I want to reverse that, we'll just hit the invert sorting option. And what we'll do is we'll see Zeus first. And if we go all the way to the bottom here. We would see our adders and such. I'm having a little trouble scrolling down. I'm not sure what my deal is. But we'll go ahead and change that back to the way it sh the way that uh, this is. Looks like my scroll bar is locked up for some reason. I'm sure that's just a bug. There's usually a scroll bar right here. So uh, keep that in mind if you're watching this video in the future. I do apologize for that. I haven't noticed that particular bug because I tend to uh, not show all my battle mechs. I just do it by class. So if we go, let's go heavy. I think I have enough. And then we'll see that I get a scroll bar. So I'm not sure why that particular uh, function isn't working with the uh, all. I do have a theory. Let's go ahead. Yep, you have to have a accordion open. Uh, so keep that in mind. That, in my opinion, is a bug in the UI is that if there's not an accordion open, because uh, as I was showing you, I had an accordion or hit collapse all and collapsed all my accordions. That apparently removes the scroll bar. That's a pretty big bug. Uh, after I'm done making this video, I'll go ahead and open up a ticket about that. That shouldn't be. But uh, keep that in mind. If your scroll bar disappears on you, um, open up a panel. You'll get your scroll bar back. So uh, we all learned something. Yay. Uh, apologize for that. I was unaware that that was a bug that was going on. So the next thing that we see is our uh, number of mech bays. So I have 304 mech bays, and 295 of them are filled with battle mechs. Uh, this is the most reliable place in the UI to see the number of mech bays that you have. You go to the store and buy mech bays, but the interface there isn't real great, and it's hard to tell. And uh, as far as I can tell, you actually can't see it in that particular section. So uh, keep that in mind. Go here to look for your mech bays. So I have 304 mech bays. 295 are occupied. If you'd like to purchase a battle mech, you need to have an open mech bay. Uh, you start out with four. And after that, you have to purchase them, or you can win them through uh, events. And some of the achievements have mech bays as rewards as well. But that's our little talk about mech bays. So let's go ahead and talk about these filters right here. So we can say show all mechs, and that's what I'm doing now. And then we can go ahead and just show a particular uh, weight class. And it does tell us what our weight classes are. So show only light mechs between 20 and 35 tons. So if I click that, just lights. And of course these filters apply, so I could say light both, and we see that we have both. If I say light inner sphere, we see only my inner sphere battle mechs. So I'll keep that in mind, these filters do stack up as you start clicking on them, so whatever you have selected all at once will uh, be what you're seeing. So I'm seeing light inner sphere that I own. So I could say both, and we'd see trial mechs, and we could say only trial mechs, so on and so forth. So these filters do add up. Um, pretty straightforward here. Mediums are between 40 and 55 tons. Heavies are 60 to 75. And then assaults are 100 and up. And that's, we can just show whichever of those we'd like. And then there's this second set of filters here. We see we have a space and then a second set of filters. Now these filters also add up. So if I say champions, we'll filter for only the champion battle mechs I own. So there we go. I own a champion banshee. Champion mechs are only available for sea bills, but they are exactly the, the same as the variant they are. So if we look at that banshee again, we'll see it's a banshee BNC-3M. If I had a regular sea bill version of that battle mech, the hard points, the performance, everything about it's exactly the same. What makes this mech different is that it has a 30% bonus to XP. So uh, keep that in mind. They're only available for C-Bills. They're exactly the same, and the only benefit you get is the XP bonus, and that's only helpful after you're leveling it. Uh, you would still continue to gain XP, but then you'd have to trade that in for uh, GXP, and that costs money. So uh, keep that in mind when purchasing these. All the ones I own, I have one. So uh, they do do events and giveaways that will net you champion mechs, so keep that in mind. The next class of battle mech we have is Hero. And as I said, these filters will stack. So I'll say Hero and Champion. And it will show me both Champion mechs and Hero. So we'll look at our Banshee. Because I have the Champion and the Hero. So what I'll do for the purpose of the tutorial is just turn that Champion off. Just wanted to show you that all these filters do stack together. And some of them are kind of would be mutually exclusive. So I don't know how useful that would be. But here we go. I have the Banshee Hero mech. And so it's just going to show me my assault mechs that are heroes. So if I pop open my atlas, we'll see that I have the boar's head, 
and so on and so forth. So I just let this find her hero mechs. What makes hero mechs different is that they have a different hard point layout. They have a special paint job that's only available to that particular battle mech and a 30% bonus to sea bills. So if you see a hero mech you like, I rec recommend picking it up because the additional uh, sea bills is a good boost. But you may not find that a good deal, but just uh, keep that in mind. That's what hero mechs do. They give you more sea bills, special paint job, and different hard points than any other variant. So we'll go ahead and remove that filter, and we'll put the special filter on. And what the special battle mechs are, are battle mechs that are generally available in a mech pack. So if you go out to the website right now and look, you'll see all the different mech packs, and it'll say includes a special variant. So if we look at the Cyclops, we'll see that I purchased that pack, and I got the uh, Cyclops 11A S in parens and that means hey this is a special battle mech and it has the same bonus as a hero mech it has a 30 percent boost to sea bills it has a special paint job but what it doesn't have is a unique hard point layout it has the exact same hard point layout as the uh 11a cyclops so they're kind of like mini hero mechs so uh, keep that in mind and the only reliable the most reliable way to obtain these special mechs is to buy the mech packs. There are other things that can occur, like loyalty mechs. So what we'll do is we'll go medium, and we'll say blackjack. This was a giveaway this year for the loyalty options. And so we see this Ellen Perens behind it. It's a blackjack 2. It's like any other blackjack 2 that's available out there. But again, mini hero, special paint job, sea build bonus. But otherwise, exactly the same as far as hard points and performance. So... That's what special mechs are. And then finally, the last uh, category special mech that I can think of is uh, this Jenner here, Sarah's Jenner. This mech was done as a, a promotion to uh, uh, honor one of our uh, fallen mech warriors. She was a young girl, I believe she was five, that uh, had cancer. So they, and she uh, unfortunately lost that battle. Um, so they did this as a, uh, a promotion to give money to cancer research. Uh, I purchased one. So every once in a while you'll see the, the Jenner 7B and it'll say S and that's what it is. It's somebody with a, a Sarah's mech. So uh, that's, I believe, all the different kind of special battle mechs that are out there. I may have missed one. They're, they've kind of done one-offs in the past, but I don't believe I have. So then we'll get rid of special, and then we'll say favorites. Now this will come up blank for me, and we'll talk more about adding a favorite, but once you add a favorite, it'll show up in this list, and I'll come back up here and show you that once we uh, show you how to use the favorite part. So that's been talk about all the filters, so let's talk about what we see when we're interacting with the panel. So if you have selected by chassis, you'll see an accordion that lists an arrow and that lets you interact with the accordion. The next thing we see is the chassis, so these are commandos. We see their class, so these are lights. And then we see how many I have. I have five commandos. If we look at Firestarter, I have one. So this is all pretty straightforward. So what we'll do is uh, flip over to class and we'll see it changes just slightly. And we'll go ahead and close this guy up. That's not letting me close it for some reason. Maybe if I say all, that would help. Uh, I only had light selected, so of course it was showing me all the lights. So we have the uh, panel uh, accordion again, and you can see it's closed, and it just lists our weight class and how many of each we have. So uh, 33 lights, 52 mediums, 44 heavies, and 41 assault max. So uh, we'll go back to chassis. This is how I prefer to interact with it, but do what makes you happy. So um, let's talk about what we see when we come out here and look at these accordion windows. Now, by default, when you come out here, um, the battle mech that you have selected, so I have a linebacker, will be open, and I'll show you that just by clicking on heavy here so I can find it. Oh, I, the reason I can't see it is because it's a clan mech. So you can see that by default, whatever you have selected has that panel window open. So pretty straightforward there. So let's talk about these uh, different battle mechs that we see. So if you want to select a battle mech, all you have to do is come to these boxes and click on one. So we'll see that I've changed from my linebacker A to my linebacker B, and we'll just click on it again. Ta-da! That's all there is to actually select a battle mech, but let's talk about what information is available in these uh, little portraits of our battle mechs. So the first thing we see is a chassis, so linebacker. So that'll be kind of uh, redundant in this particular view is that um, 
I have linebackers open, and well, of course I'll see linebackers. What we see over here on the right is the variant, so this is an LBK-A linebacker, and then we see our name here. So if I were to change the name of the battle mech, again, if you need to know how to do that, check out my mech details tutorial, and it would list the name here. By default, the name is the same as the variant, so there we go. That's all there is to it. The next thing we see is this star, and this is how we select the favorite battle mech. Let's say I really like my linebacker A, I will click on that. It is now in my favorites, so if I filter by favorites, we'll see, hey, just a one mech, my linebacker. So let's go ahead and turn that filter off, and we'll deselect him as favorites. So just clicking on again removes it, and that's all there is to it. So let's talk about the actual portrait of the battle mech. Now, the first thing we see up here in the left-hand corner is XP times two. I see this question asked a ton in the forum. What, is, what does this mean? This means that I have not won a match today in this particular battle mech. So I haven't played with my linebacker A today and won. The first match that you win a day in a battle mech grants you double experience. So this just helps you keep track of that. If that wasn't here, I'd have to remember, did I play my linebacker or not? Now I don't have to remember, so I have that nice little indicator that tells me, hey, you can still, you're still eligible for your times 2 XP. And just to reiterate for clearness, that means that you get double XP on the first win of the day in a chassis. And that resets uh, every night at 6 p.m. Mountain Standard Time. That's the time zone I live in. Um, not real great on those conversions off the top of my head. If I'd have been thinking, I'd have prepared that before I got here. But just so you know, just do a conversion to your local time. So uh, 6 p.m. Mountain Standard Time. The next thing that we see over here on the right on the top is this little uh, star with wings around it, and that indicates our skill level. If you would like to know more about skill levels in Battle Mechs, check out my tutorial on skills. I go through all of it there, including what the different colors on this little icon mean. The next thing that we see is a portrait of our Battle Mech. So here's a nice picture of my Battle Mech. It should update to reflect any changes that you've made. So the weapons that you've loaded out, the paint job that you have, it should update. Now we can see that these match. In one case, they do not. We'll look at this battle mech. You can see I've changed his paint. His uh, lines here that we see here are uh, black, not green. Um, it should update this whenever you save your loadout. Every once in a while, it doesn't happen. I'm not qu quite sure why it is a known bug they are looking at it, but it's very rare. As you can see, all of my other battle mechs that are linebackers are fine. Don't know what's up with this guy, but it isn't a huge deal to me. Uh, if it is to you, feel free to contact support and let them know that it's a big problem for you. I don't find it that much of a problem. So that's all there is to the uh, actual picture of the battle mech. And then finally, what we see in the bottom here is its hard points. So this battle mech has four energy hard points and two missile hard points. If we look at my linebacker B, we see one ballistic, four energy hard points, and an AMS. If you'd like to know more about hard points, check out my mech lab tutorial. We'll go through the hard out, the <laughs> hard outs, the <laughs> hard point section of the loadout there. And pretty much what that means is the kind of energy, or the kind of weapons it can equip. So in this case, I can equip four energy weapons, four different lasers, four of the same laser, whatever, uh, or and two missile systems, so long range, short range, whatever. Um, so that's all there is to the actual portrait, except for one thing is if you have a special battle mech, shouldn't say special because that means something. If you have a non-standard variant of a battle mech, such as a hero mech, a special mech, or a champion mech, if you touch the portrait, what it'll do is it'll flip for you and tell you what is special about it. So. In the case of my linebacker Redline, it's a hero mech, so I get a bonus to C-Bills, and it lets me know that. In the case of my linebacker Prime, that's special. Again, we get the bonus to C-Bills. If we were to go out and find a champion mech, we would see that it would be the bonus to XP. So if you can't remember what those bonuses are, just get the card to flip. And then the final thing about the select mech screen is if you mouse over one of the portraits not only will it flip if we have a special battle mech but we get this pull out on the side that lets us know additional information about our battle mech now this one's a little tricky because i can't point at it so if i move my mouse away what it does is it makes that pop-up go away or pull out i should say so let's take a look at the pull out on the top name information linebacker chassis type so that's their chassis, it's a linebacker, it's variant, and then finally on the very right-hand side, it's name. And again, the default on the name is the variant. 
The next thing we see is it's hard points. So it just lists out the hard points for us again. It lets us know about any upgrades that we've done to the battle mech. If you'd like to know more about those upgrades, check out my tutorial on upgrades. It talks about them there. And then we get some information about how fast my battle mech is. You can see speed and it says F and R. That's forward and reverse. So this battle mech runs 104.5 going forward and 69.8 going backwards. The next thing we see is jump jet distance. If we have a battle mech that's equipped with jump jets and that actually deserves a little bit of talking about, we'll go ahead and find one. we can see that the jump distance is displayed in a similar manner to the speed. We have the first number, which is how far I can jump. This particular battle mech can jump 7.4 meters over a maximum of 52 meters. In the case of my linebacker, we saw that he had no jump jets, so no possible jump radius, so it was zero, zero. In this case, this mech has very few jump jets equipped so very short jump range let's take a look at a couple other ones you can see I have more jump jets on this one so the more jump jets you equip the farther you can jump again if you want to know more about equipping jump jets in your battle mech check out my mech lab tutorial I'll show you how to do it there the next thing we see is the size of the engine the battle mech has this one has an XL350 and then the last stat that we see up there is the maximum engine size so this battle mech can have a maximum engine rating of 315 and we see that that's what I have equipped not a goal to shoot for it just lets you know how high the engine can be the next thing that we see is, on the left hand side is the loadout of the battle mech so in this particular battle mech i have two clan medium pulse lasers and two er small lasers that are also clan and then we see a list of this battle mech's quirks directly underneath that which this one has none of so what i will do is find one that has quirks so let's go back to our heavies. We'll go back to our linebackers. I know they have quirks. So we see a summary of the quirks. All the quirks are pretty straightforward and self-explanatory. So acceleration and deceleration rate. It accelerates 30% faster than the standard heavy mech would and decelerates 30% faster than a standard heavy mech would. The turn rate is how fast the battle mech can turn. You can see that also has a bonus to it. Um, of course, when we're looking at our... Uh, quirks here numbers that are green are good numbers that are red are that are bad so you could uh have a quirk that negatively impacts one of these stats so keep that in mind it's very rare and i can't think of one that has it but i do see it every once in a great while usually applies to clan mechs and their laser duration so it makes their lasers burn longer um as i said everything on here is pretty self-explanatory armor bonuses i get more ar armor on those components structure bonuses i get more structure um, with Omnimex, like this one, we'll see that it says an XP bonus because I'm using all of the Omnipods for this mech. If you take Omnipods off this mech, better linebacker C Omnipods and put like linebacker B Omnipods on it, we'd lose that XP bonus. If you need to know more about switching out Omnipods, check out my mech lab tutorial. I've got Omnipods there too. So, But that's pretty much just changing the hard points that are available on special clan mechs that are called Omnipods. And then we see some weapons quirks. Uh, we see that all of the different types of ER lasers have a heat duration or a heat generation bonus. They produce 5% less heat. We see that the lasers also have a shorter duration, which is 5% less. And then we also see that my LRMs have a cooldown, so they reload 15% faster. That's pretty much all, they are, all there is to these quirks. They're all pretty self-explanatory. They apply to what they say, so it's pretty straightforward. So the only really gotchas on that that can be mildly confusing for players is the groupings. So it, we can see that this says ER small laser, ER medium laser, and ER large laser. So it's only those particular lasers. If it just said laser, it would be all lasers. Um, the one that's confusing for people is PPCs. A PPC quirk applies to both PPCs and ER PPCs. An ER PPC quirk only applies to ER PPCs. And then finally, the last thing that a lot of people don't know, I've tested this, I know it's true, it, it has remained true, is that what a PPC fires that's going down range is considered a ballistic. For every other thing about it, it's considered an energy weapon, but for what's going down range is ballistic. So if you have a quirk that just says energy heat duration, minus 10%, that applies to a PPC. 
if you see energy cool down 5%, that applies to a PPC. But if you see ballistic velocity 10%, that would make your PPC's shot go faster. So keep that in mind, that that ballistic velocity quirk applies to what a PPC shoots. And then finally, let's talk about the uh, right-hand side on that bar. We have modules on the top, so that's what modules I have equipped in this battle mech. If you need to know more about modules, check out my tutorial on that. I explain those there, but they pretty much uh, just slightly tweak the performance of your battle mech. The next thing we see is cockpit, and this lets you know what items you have mounted in your cockpit. Again, if you need to uh, get some help putting stuff in your cockpit, check out my tutorial there. But those are all just vanity items that don't have any impact on gameplay, so don't worry about them too much. The next thing that we see is our armor distribution. I have two numbers there and again 422 and 422 the number on the right is the maximum value the number on the left is what you have equipped so I have all the armor this battle mech can hold again it's not necessarily goal to have your mech fully armored I like to do that but playstyle dictates how you armor your machine so we'll talk more about that in the uh, loadout tutorials where we actually armor a battle mech the next thing that we see is this little uh, graph that shows us heat management versus firepower. Now we can see this battle mech has a heat management of 1.3 over 2. 2 means that your battle mech is extremely cool and won't overheat. Uh, 1 means that you're probably in a scary spot. You'll heat overheat quickly. And then 0 would be if you shoot, you will shut down. Um, I like to keep my heat management around 1.5. Depends on the machine. We can see that this one's got a little higher one. Uh, really what that has to do with on the decision making on this particular machine is I have medium lasers and LRMs. I don't fire them both at the same time. If you're far away from me, I'm going to shoot you with LRMs. If you're close, I'm going to shoot with you with medium lasers. I'm not going to shoot you with both. Or if I do, it'll be rarely. So I think it's okay to have a lower heat management in that case. But um, if you're a new player and you're really wor worried about your heat management, I like to say a goal is probably 0.5. That'll uh, let you have some good uh, firepower, but not constantly overheating. So it'll give you a chance to learn to uh, manage your heat a little bit better. But again, playstyle rules, so heat management isn't uh, a hard and fast thing. So, and the next thing we see is firepower. The maximum firepower a battle mech can have is 250s. We can see there on the right hand number. And then we see that my alpha strike on this battle mech is 41 points of damage. And I really want to make this clear because I've seen this go on with new players. This is not a goal. Don't try to get your battle mech doing 250 points of damage on an alpha strike. I'm not 100% sure you could even reach it. Uh, maybe some of the dire star builds. And what that refers to is uh, taking a dire wolf and putting as many energy hard points on it as possible and then filling them with the RPPCs. Uh, bad idea for lots of reasons. Number one, uh, you probably have to strip armor. That's not great. Uh, and the main reason that it's just a terrible idea is you cannot manage the heat of that. There's uh, a thing called heat scale that as you fire groups of weapons that are the same, you start incurring a heat penalty. With that many PPCs, you will melt immediately. Don't, don't, don't do that. So just keep in mind that this... The only thing that matters about your firepower stat is that first number. You want it to be as high as possible, but don't worry about a specific number. A lot of people like 30, a lot of people like 40. It doesn't matter, your lights aren't gonna get that high and depending on uh, your uh, build style and what you're doing with your battle mech, you might not be able to get that high. So uh, don't worry about that. I have a couple battle mechs that have 70 or 80 alpha point alpha strikes. I can't use an alpha strike in those mechs because they get too hot. So uh, just keep that in mind that this firepower isn't a goal. Don't get to 250. So uh, we're done with that. We'll uh, talk about our tonnage. So our tonnage there, 65 out of 65. Number on the right is how much the battle mech can weigh, 65 tons. The number on the left is how much my battle, battle mech does weigh, 65 tons. This is a goal. Bring all of your tonnage with you, except for the rare cases of a few battle mechs that are fully armored and they weigh like 64.9 tons probably okay with that but don't go running around in a 65 ton mech with 50 tons of equipment on it you're wasting 15 tons so uh keep that in mind get that number up as high as you can that one matters uh the next thing that we see there is two graphs our pitch angle and our yaw angle that lets us know how far our battle mech can pitch and how far it can turn side to side and as you can see on the yaw one 
and the pitch one. There's yellow that indicates where our torso moves. There's uh, white and then orange on... It's white on the pitch, orange on the yaw that indicates where our arms are moving. So that's how far we can look up, look down, and then move side to side. And then underneath that, we just see the actual uh, number of degrees and uh, how it breaks out the uh, pitch and yaw there. This has been a look at the uh, Select Mech. Thanks for sticking with me if you watched the whole video. It's a long one. There's a lot of stuff going on here. Um, as always, I hope you have great luck on the battlefield. I hope to see you there. And if you have questions, concerns, comments, want to know something else, leave me a note in the comment section of this video. I'll get back with you as soon as I can. Have great luck on the battlefield and hope to see you there. Thanks for watching.